So great to, today to have my friend and client Abhishek Bhatia, or Abby, um, who runs IDEA, and uh, which is a process design and engineering consultancy. And so what we want to speak about today is uh, his his r transition really from employee to business owner, uh, some of the learnings that he's taken as he's gone through that transition, and uh, you know, and maybe talk a bit, a bit about the coaching journey as well. So, Abby, great to have you on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So, let's just kind of get the the kind of the the uh, the, the, the obvious things out of the way. You've got idea on your chest. What does it stand for? First of all, so it's uh, Integro Design Engineering Associates, and the word Integro is Latin for integrated. Um, because we are a multidiscipline team, we have chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, piping engineers, electrical engineers, yeah. instrumentation engineers. Um, it's really just to provide clients with a one-stop shop solution so they don't have to go to, because generally when you are in our line of work, when you are delivering projects, you need a good coordination between all these disciplines to yeah. deliver the final product for the clients. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so we are, as you said, we are a process design and engineering consultancy, yeah. uh, mainly uh, involved in designing uh, new plants or modifying existing plants that produce uh, some sort of hazardous substance. Mm -hmm. um, um, and one of our biggest sectors that we play in is kind of, you can say, beverage, mainly distilled spirits. Uh, and a lot of people may or may not know, but spirits can be uh, very hazardous. Uh, they are flammable. Uh, if they are uh, left out in the open, they can catch fire. So our job is to keep the assets, the people, the operations safe by designing things in a safe manner. Uh, but it can also be, we have done work in other sectors, renewable, uh, hydrogen, um, and uh, um, in one instance, we had designed a polymer recycling plant, for instance, uh, where they had proven something at a lab scale and they were looking to upscale it um, um, to prove the concept at a pilot scale level, so for the size of this room. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so you kind of sit with them, understand what their requirements are, uh, where the key risks are, and you can help mitigate the risk as your design evolves to give them the final solution. All right, okay. and and. The um, the thing I'm interested in, I mean, all of that is stuff which is well beyond my kind of uh, intellectual capabilities, right? But what I'm interested in as well in is is how you've then then transitioned as well from from being an employee and now into uh, a, a successful business uh, uh, owner as well. And the thing that struck me when we first um, started talking was, you know, immediately I could see you're a, you're a ferocious learner and a a quick implementer. Is that is that fair to say? Uh, I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I, I, I like learning about new things. Uh, however, you talked about uh, this transition from being uh, obviously uh, being in employment to then um, uh, having a business. Yeah. Um, I think one thing I would say is I never expected myself to own a business or be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, my dad worked in a company for 40 years. He went yeah. seven o'clock every morning, Monday to Saturday. And for me, growing up, seeing him, I was like, this is pretty good, you know, wow. um, so somewhere where I can see myself yeah. uh, working and probably giving your whole kind of professional life. Yeah. Um, but I think the times change as by the time I uh, finished my education, there was a lot more um, uh, challenges uh, in terms of the in terms of world economics. Uh, it wasn't easy to keep businesses kind of in a way that there's never going to be any redundancies. Uh, mm -hmm. Things are more market driven sometimes. So one of the first companies I worked in uh, was even kind of owned through private equity. It's called uh, Clyde Union Pumps, previously called Weir Pumps. I absolutely love because as a young graduate mechanical engineer, uh, you are surrounded by hundreds of engineers mm -hmm. around you. Um, but, uh, and, and I think things were going very well. Uh, uh, I think Jim McCall, who is uh, one of the kind of, you know, biggest entrepreneurs in Scotland, uh, owned Clyde Union at that time. Uh, order book was growing. And SPX, which is, a, 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 which is one of the kind of Fortune 500 companies in US, ended up acquiring mm -hmm. around 200, 2012. And straight after that, if you remember, oil prices started to um, go down. Mm -hmm. And there were multiple round of redundancies, which, 
isn't good when you are thinking of obviously buying your first place but that was a first real kind of you know it hits you that okay mm. your dad worked in a government job for 40 years mm. without worrying about redundancies and mm -hmm. you know you, you never even knew that you know these kind of things can happen and uh, and then to realize okay it's not as <laughs> stable as i thought it would be mm. um, and, and 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 yes so i, I made some changes yeah. went to a very different industry that I was in, yeah. um, mainly in Clyde Union. We were involved in energy sector, uh, oil and gas, uh, nuclear, and then I ended up uh, going to uh, William Grant and Sons, which owns brands like Henrix, uh, yeah. Glenfiddich, um, and uh, and yeah, very different environment, very fast pace. Yeah. Um, uh, any distillery, you can call it like a process plant, um, and that's hence the word process that you keep hearing. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, and yeah, so even that was a was a it required a bit of learning yeah. from myself. So I think seeing through some of these transition organically uh, or some by choice yeah. in my professional career, then coming to obviously uh, having a business, mm. even though it was a step change, um, uh, you kind of you know obviously you look around and say who I can learn from or what resources are at my uh, at my and obviously I reached out to you as well last year yeah. uh, when I thought that okay what does being an MD of a business mean yeah. uh, what things really that I need to obviously think about that I previously never had to think about as an engineer yeah. um, and, and you learn and that's the thing that struck me as well is just that okay so you're now in a position of, of you're the, the formal MD within the, the, group, the, the group of directors that you've got but then it's like okay how do I become the an effective MD and that's when you reached out and for me I, I really like that it just says okay I've got a gap in my knowledge skill set currently how do I fill it and we, we, there's a phrase that someone uh, in, in our coaching team shared with me many years ago and says look you know what you want for all your clients is this it are three things you know learn fast change fast maintain drive was what he said to me and and, and I think what you, you kind of have shown me is just that ability to kind of just quickly get some stuff in there and then do something with it and then keep going and persisting until and you know we've just had a, a team day only two weeks two, two days, days ago if you'd yeah. say and it was great to see you know where are we now in terms of team numbers i think 16 staff 16. and nine contractors consultants so we are 25 25 people in the space of how long four years wow it's yeah. impressive eh? yeah no. Impressive. And, and uh, okay, well, let's just go back to that, that team bit, actually, if you don't mind. What was the purpose behind having that team day just on Wednesday? Uh, and what was the impact of that? Yeah, so, so when I, obviously, uh, when we developed our functional structure last year, mm -hmm. uh, in which uh, I took on the role of integrator or managing director, overseeing all the functions that we you generally have in the business, from marketing and BD mm -hmm. to um, sales tendering, which is a key part of, uh, uh, and then obviously having operations and all the business support related things like finance, IT. As we have grown as a company, things that we never had to worry about kind of yeah. you know we had to kind of almost like um, box them in a way that their their people know their responsibilities when it comes to the business rules not just as engineers what we are doing on projects but having that clarity uh, across the business as well mm -hmm. um, obviously until i came to you and started uh, discussing learning mm -hmm. um, realized that uh, that before you do all that or while you're doing all this you also have to think about the bigger picture that mm -hmm. you know the, your purpose why do you do what you do mm -hmm. what keeps you motivated and after all we're all human beings uh, we need that drive mm -hmm. um, and no matter how motivated you are uh, sometimes your judgment can be cloud or you can have too many thoughts can i go after this this and this but to have that clarity that uh, end of the day if you don't have a structure in place, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you won't be able to achieve things in mm -hmm. a timely manner or in an orderly manner. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I think kind of on, on above all this, when any company thinks about what are they trying to build? Mm -hmm. What culture are they trying to create? Uh, what is their strategy to grow? Um, we didn't, obviously when we started, we had ideas in our head. Mm -hmm but we didn't really did it in a structured way. Mm -hmm. But last year, I think the, the difference has been that we have looked hard within to ask these questions. And, and, and being four kind of shareholders in the business, 
to then democratically agree something mm -hmm. that can that can then be communicated or perpetuated mm -hmm. to rest of the team. Uh, I would like to say that we actually put time aside um, uh, to 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 do a you know justice mm -hmm. to to that. So I think if I break down last one year into two parts, first half being us at a at a board level thinking that what do you want, uh, how, how do we want to shape idea mm -hmm. and where do we see it going in the next three to five years mm -hmm. to then communicating it to the rest of the team, mm -hmm. turning that strategy into a bit of a plan, you see, mm -hmm. and how we execute that plan. So the whole purpose of uh, ID, uh, our away day two days ago was to communicate that. Yeah. Communicated not just through slides and through, through one of the teams meeting, it's really kind of, uh, it was a great environment as you as you saw, it was a good atmosphere. Um, everybody was away from their phones and from, from their day-to-day -day work. And we could really kind of, uh, in the three hours, as, as much as we could do, is to one year of learning, condensed it uh, over obviously a few slides to then show to them, uh, to tell them a story mm -hmm. that this is where we have been, this is where we are going mm -hmm. and, and, and hopefully even if a fraction of it kind of sticks with them, it helps them, gives them the same drive as, as we have, uh, you know, to take the company forward. And I think we already have a few people who have now been with us for a couple of years. They've really become the part of the founding team. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we were already obviously four directors to start with, which is a fortunate position to be in when you start alone, when you have to take a lot of decisions on your own to then having a good kind of senior management team to working with you to uh, to mm -hmm. to to drive the business forward is all you can ask for mm -hmm. uh, and and i really i think i look at them and say you are really part of that founding team mm -hmm. that we now have mm -hmm. um, and and hopefully we we no matter whether people are joining uh, with 10 years experience or one year experience i'm sure everybody will be speaking the same language and giving the same message mm -hmm. uh, that they heard on Wednesday. Yeah, it was it was great to see. And I think, you know, the way you just framed that and getting alignment and clarity with the shareholders and then communicating that to the team is really strong. And obviously talked about the the kind of the, the culture as well that, yeah. that, that you want, because what was really evident for me just two days ago was just a the growth within the team. But actually, it's going to get much bigger as well. Yeah, quite quickly. Well, so, we already have four positions advertised, you yeah. know, as we speak. So you're right. Um, and before you start thinking about fixing it in the future, yeah. we have already taken a proactive step yeah. to say, okay, let's repair our roof when it's sunshine yeah. and then and, and look at these things. Uh, and thing is, it has laid a great foundation for us to build upon. Um, and, and yes, we didn't have to think about these things the first mm -hmm. two years. But the fact that we have now done it, it gives everybody a mm -hmm. good kind of starting point to say that uh, that this is how we want to we want to take idea. So idea has kind of grown beyond the four directors. I would mm -hmm. say it's, it's an entity which people are proudly wearing and mm. want to work for. You heard some examples people yeah. coming from the uh, from the front and saying we want to be a part of idea, which in the first two three years of any startup can be very hard. Well, that was hugely impressive. Just the the amount of people who have said, "Yeah, we 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 proactively came to you and said, are there any jobs we want to kind of come and work for you?" And that's that's an enviable position for any business to be in, where you're attracting talent like that. Um, Especially now, it's an employee market. Um, yeah. It's very tough for employers, um, and and even going through recruiters, it's not you you you're not going to get the right talent. Yeah. with the right attitude who fits with their values. Um, so for, for us to be in that position where we have built a team, uh, we have actually created the, the values are driven by people who are already working yeah. in the business. Yeah. We say, how good is this that they are not just good engineers, they are good people. Mm. And we, we are like, okay, if I now have to ask today that uh, what kind of values we would have for the business, you just look at not just at the directors, you look at the whole team yeah. and you said, this is the environment they have driven so far. Let's write it down and say, this is what we want future joinees and, to and be. And so to that point then, so again, a lot of people would, look, would dismiss values as being, oh yeah, it's just a, mm -hmm. just a bit of waffle business jargon, kind of get them up on the wall type thing. But, but you know, what, what, how do you kind of view culture and values then? Why is it important? I think I've worked with within the big businesses and I think you heard a couple of uh, uh, obviously guys uh, at our Abay Day as well that we have we have perceived values in organizations that way. 
Mm. Um, and uh, and I think end of the day, it's the people you're working with. Are they living their, those values or not mm -hmm. is what really uh, uh, matters. So for us, we put our values looking at what type of team we are. Mm -hmm. we are. We are companies started by engineers, run by engineers, and 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 you know work hard, play hard type of attitude, but do it with the right attitude. With you know glass half full. We come across design challenges. We come up across um, operating challenges on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. But how do you actually navigate through? And it tells you a lot about uh, a, a person that do I have? Do we have each other's back when we are trying to solve something? Yeah. So for us, we actually created values because those values were being lived and breathed mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But I can understand as you grow, as you become a bigger company, if you just blindly uh, put some values on the wall and you expect everybody to you know resonate uh, everybody to almost like um, relate to them it can be hard mm -hmm. i'm not saying that uh, bigger companies um, you know they um, some might some might not but i don't think they do it intentionally but i don't think like when i was reading the fact which i even ended up saying in our way day that only five percent of people get involved in their company strategy mm -hmm. and when you talk about strategy values is one of the things that often being mentioned mm -hmm. um, so there's a reason that when you are do you actually understand where you're working why you're working does it align with your personal mm -hmm. values if we are small enough the the size we are i think it's the right uh, size to communicate will it become challenge for us in the future to 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 do that it might because people might still see it as a you know words written on the wall uh, and that's where if you keep reinforcing that it's it's a journey if you keep reinforcing let's say we we hire someone and 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 they are not meeting one of the values you wouldn't take a immediate step if it doesn't if if you don't find about it right so it's slowly kind of then uh, then can be affecting the business mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is you as business leader if do you take action about it do you do something about it how do you deal with it uh, and that's why i think when you're hiring when you're recruiting i didn't used to believe in these things that you have to look at the values but i think you heard mm -hmm. inigo saying that mm -hmm. that it's it's going to be become part of our obviously the selection process that somebody might be a great engineer but if we don't think that he's going to culturally fit in the company we might have to pass yeah um, and and so yeah for us um, we have been on both sides we have worked in bigger companies where you know we didn't it didn't quite resonate mm -hmm. it's whatever our manager uh, or our team around us made us feel we thought those were the values we were living with mm -hmm. and that's a good example of it can mm -hmm. in a big organization can your team itself create values or 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 have values which you say how how good is it? Mm -hmm. um, so I can I can understand that in big companies you can have these silos. Some might be living the values. Some might be actually exceeding those values and having their own values that that resonate with any new joinee. Mm -hmm. I think we are small enough to you know make sure that it's communicated across and 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 executed across. I like it. And, and tell me then, the, the, obviously you've, you've worked in big companies, you've got your own business now, which is a growing kind of small, medium sized company. Um, in terms of the learning that you've had to, to go out and, and seek, and you, let's talk about books. What, what books would you say have been instrumental in changing your thinking or pointing you in a direction that says, all right, now I know what to do? I think from uh, one of the books that uh, I think was uh, recommended by you, uh, traction and yeah. uh, and another being uh, they ask you answer yeah. I think those two have really kind of mm -hmm. influenced me in the last one year mm -hmm. uh, good thing was some elements of it I think I was already doing yeah so for instance you talk about marketing mm -hmm. we were really active on LinkedIn we always talked about you know um, uh, uh, the articles the technical articles um, and and that's how we communicated with our audience which could be potential clients existing clients uh, or potential employees and and existing uh, employees so w we have always believed in kind of that inbound strategy in yeah. which if we are passionate about what we do we write about it um, and it resonates with people they would want to uh, buy from you because you're addressing their pain points you're mm -hmm. addressing their 
I think I like this one. You 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 you, you sell them painkillers, not vitamins, mm. uh, sort of thing. And I think the ask you answer kind of touches on this very point because f first. Um, few years, I, I would say that it was difficult to say, are we doing enough from business development point of view? Mm -hmm. uh, it was amazing that first time I asked you, uh, Alan, what do you recommend that we do from, you know, to, 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 to improve, um, you know, our route to the customer? And you said, you know, go read this book. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm already doing this. I'm already, you know, we already talk a lot about. The thing is LinkedIn provides you with a, with a very, the, all it costs you is your time mm -hmm. to think about it, to write, to produce the uh, content. Um, and it then started, we started then taking that and implemented in our, on our website. Mm -hmm. And our website started ranking on page mm -hmm. one when it used to be page 40, page 50. Mm -hmm. Now you know how much people spend on Google AdWords mm -hmm. to organically, um, mm -hmm. uh, to, to sorry, rank high. And we are now organically uh, ranked number one for you know some of the key relevant keywords. Mm -hmm. It just shows you that uh, that we don't have a BD team, we don't have a marketing team, but just by you know persevering with the with the methodology which you picked up in the book, and you're saying, okay, I was already doing this. Let's implement this as yeah. well and see what the result is. And it's a, you know, as, as Simon Sinek says, yeah. it's, a, it's an infinite game. Yeah. To a certain extent, it is an infinite game. If you do it for one week, two week, you're talking about your podcast, it's gonna die down. And, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes these big tech companies, Facebook, LinkedIn, their algorithm, algorithms kind of stop ranking mm -hmm. you or showing you in the results. So for us to be doing it in such a way that uh, that that it has that consistency with it. Mm -hmm. It has yielded results. Clients we meet, people we meet. Um, the first thing, the opening line they say is, "Oh, we like what we see. What what mm -hmm. you do on LinkedIn." And and we are only four year old, and we have big competitors. We have other kind of same similar size competitors, and for us to be recognized as an established brand in such a short period of time. Mm -hmm can only be, you know, let's say you got to learn. And did I did I know all this when we started? The answer is no. Yeah, but you've done a, it's interesting, you've done a really good job on the, the marketing side of things and getting the visibility. And as you say, that, that attracts both team members or future team members and also clients. Mm -hmm. But once you've got the, once you've got the business, then you've got the operations of, of, of managing the team as well. So what learning maybe have you taken from um, from that idea of managing a growing team, what are some of the key? I think one thing we recognized um, last year that the way things are growing with with the existing operating systems, we can't grow the same way. Mm -hmm. So it's first first part always comes down to recognizing it. Yeah. Did we recognize? Yes. So what have we been doing to address some of those things? Mm -hmm. uh, we have hired people who are who are what we say, you know, I think one of the phrases I learned from you, delegate to elevate. Mm. Uh, um, and I think by having those senior member in our management team uh, to share the vision with them and then to say, okay, let's baseline how we do things correctly, uh, currently and where do we want to be? How can we be better? And trust me, Alan, I've been part of the businesses where companies are making good profits or have, uh, you know, been around for many, many years. But when it comes to the operating systems, they are happy to accept the inefficiencies mm -hmm. and live with it. It costs you money, it costs you time, it costs you sometimes quality, and they're happy to live with it. For us to be in our fourth year and recognizing that we need to do something about it and putting a plan to it, mm -hmm. uh, I would say that, you know, I would like to just say thanks to the whole, you know, team mm -hmm. that is buying into it and improving. Whether that's becoming part of people's objectives uh, and they relating to that, mm -hmm. this is part of company strategy objective mm -hmm. to, to, and it's one of our goals, as you saw, uh, operational excellence, that we want to be operationally agile. Um, and, and, and for that, you can't just sit and say, because we were four or five and we were by default agile, we can stay like this with the growth that we have seen mm -hmm. in the, in the mm -hmm. four years. So to continue to stay true to our vision, what is it that we need to do to do? So there's a lot of work going on in improving our operational systems. Uh, people have clear objectives, identified what they need to do. Uh, we have, you know, 
Tim, who you met, yeah. um, he's he's driving a lot of those improvements yeah. and and investing that uh, profit back in the business yeah. to improve Good. the operations to ensure that we can you know as we grow we actually stay efficient and we continue to stay efficient uh, is is something that uh, you know maybe in our uh, size of businesses it's easier to execute and it's easier to then to get multiple approvals and to say that you know you want some budget to be spent yeah. in that yeah so i think I, I think it's a mindset uh, and and i have very good co-founders uh, or other directors in the business who really kind of buy into it and it makes your job easy um when, once you have a plan and yeah. it's all about executing it you know uh, you, it happens but to recognize, recognizing it is, is, a, is a key thing. Yeah, I, I like what you said there. It's like, you know, there's a mindset there as well about you've got a plan. It's about executing it. But there's the how do you then reinvest in the systems and the team and align the team to the, the wider plan as well? You just have to, you know, what, what, what was working when you were four or five people and you were agile, has to, that has to change. Yeah. So yeah, you, I think you've done that nicely. And so kind of moving forward, at the, so you've got marketing and sales, you've got the operations and how you make the machine work, then you get, have to get paid as well. So from, what learnings do you have from a financial function point of view? I don't think we have fully, fully cracked uh, uh, that one because uh, obviously we have used tools which uh, allows us to generate invoices rather than doing it manually. Mm -hmm. It allows us to track uh, in an efficient way uh, through your accounting software. But how that accounting software uh, seamlessly integrates with your uh, enterprise mm -hmm. you know, uh, ERP system, we're still kind of trying to bring those improvements. It's very much overlaps with the operational yeah. improvements as well. Um, because once the work is delivered, you got to communicate that to the right person to say that now the invoice can go out. Yeah. It's not that just the generation of the invoice itself, it's at what point. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing it over emails, if you're doing it just over Teams, it can become really inefficient. Um, and just to give you an example, up until maybe two years ago, we were doing 10 or 12 projects at any given time. Now we have 70 live projects um, with multiple milestone payments associated mm -hmm. with them. So you can say if you turn them into the number of you know, payments that you have to track, it could be in hundreds mm -hmm. uh, on an ongoing basis. So as I said, we are looking at, uh, I think it's very much the part of our uh, operational improvements yeah. to find that, to make that more seamless than it is now, because what we thought was working through spreadsheets yeah. is, is is already proving challenging. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. no, that, that makes that makes sense then. And so, so, and then we've maybe touched on it with regards to the culture and the values and what have you, but you know, what learnings do you have around team because yeah, again over the course of this conversation I just want to kind of cover almost the four key areas of marketing sales operations finance and team as well so what learnings could you maybe share around I, I think uh, I think with comes to the team uh, I think two days ago when we were doing our away day um, I put this graph in which we showed uh, yeah, the like people that. who uh, had started with us in what year and months they had started and I think it was Alistair who said that the fact that we are not just a number on this chart and it says our names kind yeah. of meant a lot to them. And I think when it comes to people or team, it boils down to a few simple things to make them feel you know, important and understanding what their key drivers are, uh, what their motivations are. It could be professional, it could be the hobbies they do, you know, uh, by, by giving them that flexibility that allows them to, mm. you know, during the day, to, to do something that they couldn't do in their previous job and saying, okay, as long as you know the work, the outcome is happening, we don't really care whether you're on your desk between 12 and two mm -hmm. or not giving them that flexibility. Um, and, and again, understanding that you know some of our uh, team members who are now gonna have young families or, or just had young families, understanding their uh, challenges. So if you, can, if you can really work with people uh, and if you wanna have a thriving team, you need to, you need to know them, you need to understand them, yeah. uh, and you need to be human <laughs> with them. Uh, as much as we all know that professionally we are trying to get the work out of the door, yeah. it's gotta be done by your team. And if you don't recognize uh, that, um, and if they don't feel wanted, they don't feel um, uh, that, uh, that you're part of that journey, yeah. then I'm sure they'll find 
somewhere you, they'll go somewhere else yeah. where they where they do uh, financial motivation lo for a long time i thought that being a young company how can i just keep up with the salary yeah. s demand but i think i've realized uh, that that it is beyond that uh, mm. there are other drivers there are other factors and 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 i am having those conversations on an ongoing basis with them that what really drives them um, mm. the thing is i could do that more on a personal basis before but now that we are growing it's how others kind of have the same relationship yeah. with the rest of the team is going to be the yeah. challenge but again that's where the values become it's those it's all these hidden things mm. you know uh, it's quite easy to form biases it's qu quite easy to but if you're clearly kind of communicating your values and 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 you're you're leading by example then i'm sure rest of the team who you have hired and trusted yeah. with looking after other people they do the same Nice. Um, and and yeah, so so I was saying on Wednesday, it's like for me, it's like connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. You know what affects. And as engineers, we 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 spend a lot of time on equations, just saying this is proportional to this, and and hence the outcome is this. And I can see that, like yeah. you know, even 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 in here. So you yeah. were asking about the learning in the last one year. Yeah. For me, sometimes self help books. Uh, sitting uh, with the coach and trying to, you know, understand, decipher this, you know, wonderful world of how to run the business. Um, how you then, what elements you take and implement is really what then customizes what it means for you and your business. Um, and it's that translation is where I think coaching kind of helps you really. Mm -hmm. Um, and and books help you. I don't think they give you the answer that go and yeah. you know go and apply this and you're going to be okay. Uh, it's it and 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 it happened with me like the the meeting that I was meant to have last year when I had to f f sit with my partners for the first time mm -hmm. and say to them everything that we were discussing on vision, mission, objectives. And I was so nervous, like I was changing my slides and like how to how do I get their buy-in yeah. um, into this? But I think it was. Three days before that, I messaged you while we were like, Alan, something clicked. Like, what if I show it like this? I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And, and it happens to us as engineers a lot as well. We are breaking our head over uh, something and suddenly you're standing in the shower and, you know, penny drops and you say, yeah. okay, this is how I can implement this. Yeah. And this is maybe what the potential solution is. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, you just got to, you just got to persevere. Uh, and, and, and if you're being honest with yourself that, that, you you're doing whatever the best you can to understand how to best implement this i think at some point it will you know start com com compartmentalizing yeah. in your head and and then you'll follow and you'll come through yeah nicely said and and so finally then just to wrap up what how would you describe the coaching journey to anyone who may never have experienced coaching what's I think coaching journey, um, so for instance, when I came last year to yourself, it was pretty apparent that first session went quite well because all you were doing was telling about you as a person. And I think you had asked me to, you know, uh, like think about the companies, you know, what your why is and, and, and what you want to do. And I, I think I, <laughs> I wrote down a vision statement and you looked at it and it was it was quite good because you didn't say that this is this is not what you were meant to do <laughs> but you said it in a way that i understood i got the message i think sometimes you need that not say somebody to show the mirror but almost mm -hmm. like saying that okay I, I can understand what you're thinking but how about this mm -hmm. you know um and uh, and and for me so i have a i have a I have a business coach uh, yourself. I also have a mentor mm -hmm. who has been on a journey that you know uh, I'm on at the moment. And sometimes it's just speaking to them answers. You know, something happens. You you're talking, and uh, and 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 you're like, okay, yeah, maybe maybe you're right. And it, it's it's I think it's just part of just accepting you don't know everything mm. and you're never going to know everything. But the network that I'm a part of now, which, you know, which I have access to through yourself in itself, if I have any question or there's a, you know, uh, my judgment is being clouded. I can always, you know, ask other SME owners yeah. or entrepreneurs about how do you guys, you yeah. know, uh, think that. And it's not what they say and you're going to just, you know, implement it blindly, but it just sometimes takes you to the, uh, destination quicker 
Yeah. Um, and that's what it's all about. Um, you're still going to make mistakes. You're still going to get your fingers burned a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, but is that not what the, you know, the whole thing about the journey is, the learning is? Um, so I think I, I spent a lot of my early years, like first 10, 15 years in, in developing myself as a professional engineer. Yeah. And I think I have a long way to go now to, you know, do the same uh, when it comes to, you know, being one of the, obviously, business owners. And, uh, and, and, and it's, it's, you know, it's learning and you got to accept there'll be, you know, we'll need more books. I think I've read like six books from the start of this year. Yeah. I don't think I ever read this much before, yeah. uh, but after traction and after yeah. they ask you answer, I've now had, you know, six books this year alone. Yeah. And, and everything gives you uh, a sense of, it gives you a sense of escapism as well. Uh, mm -hmm. but sometimes provide you with the clarity because somebody has done research mm -hmm. and if they are saying that this is how most of the people, how it works for them, you're like, okay, you know, maybe let's try. But you will come up with your own ways of impl implementing it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so th that's that's what I kind of, how I look at it. As Love coaching. it. Yeah. Love it. And well, look, I mean, f from my point of view, I think I said at the start, you know, you're a ferocious learner and a quick implementer as well. And I think that's, you know, you can see... Uh, uh, the impact of doing it that way because your your business has grown phenomenally fast and you know what i saw on on uh, on wednesday there was just a, a business that's really going places as well so again you. you know just bloody well done for what you've achieved so thanks well, helen and thanks to you for no. the last one year no, my pleasure it. my pleasure